The Wall Street Journal has published a story about President Joe Biden. It's being referred to as an expose due to the fact that it raises concerns about Biden's mental and physical capacities. Now, it's there's a debate about whether or not this piece is fair or just a right wing hatchet job. And I wanna discuss that. Before we do though, I think it's important to kind of differentiate the Wall Street Journal's editorial board, which is a million percent right wing. There's no question about that. But you gotta separate that from the news side of the operation, right? Because that is different and news reporters are not supposed to engage in opinion. It's supposed to be straight news reporting. And to be fair, there have been some pieces in the Wall Street Journal that I think have been fantastic on the news side of the company. With that in mind, the piece that we're talking about is titled, Behind Closed Doors, Biden Shows Signs of Slipping. Participants in meetings said the 81 year old president performed poorly at times. The White House said Biden is sharp and his critics are playing partisan politics. Now, I think both things can be true. There could be evidence of his mental decline and Republicans playing politics, because after all, this is politics. But let me give you some more details. The article is based on interviews with more than 45 people over several months. The interviews were with Republicans and Democrats who either participated in meetings with Joe Biden or were briefed on meetings with Joe Biden. Some are Democrats who have actually known Biden since he was a vice president. And so the journal references multiple concerning examples of Biden's abilities, like what I'm about to read to you. When President Biden met with congressional leaders in the West Wing in January to negotiate a Ukraine funding deal, he spoke so softly at times that some participants struggled to hear him, according to five people familiar with the meeting. Are we are we serious right now? That just reminded me of Michael Scott's negotiating tactic where he like mumbled so they couldn't hear him. It was a show of dominance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, sometimes we have our days where we're fatigued, we're exhausted, and we're just not projecting our voices. Oh, you're saying that was an unfair attack against him, that I, he was speaking too softly. Listen, okay, I wasn't sure where you were coming from. Okay. If you are a regular viewer of this show, you already know that I am concerned about Joe Biden's mental decline. Yeah. So I'm not trying to provide cover for Biden, but that critique, okay. Well, what else do they have? There's more, he read from notes to make obvious points, okay, paused for extended periods and sometimes closed his eyes for so long that some in the room wondered whether he had tuned out. I think the very last part, like if he has his eyes closed for too long and mm -hmm. you're like, is he asleep? That, that's a problem, yeah. that is a problem, <laughs> yeah. okay? But oh, he read from notes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you guys know, know this, but I, I read from my notes. Those are notes. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. You're gonna see me look down. So we'll pause. And read. Exactly. Like yeah. I. So so far, not buying it. Okay. 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 Then there are many incident incidents we've seen with our own eyes, right? So I'm gonna give you those examples. On May 20th, during a Rose Garden event celebrating Jewish American Heritage Month, Biden said one of the U.S. hostages held in Gaza was a guest at the White House event before correcting himself. One day earlier at a campaign event in Detroit, he indicated that he was vice president during the COVID-19 pandemic, which started three years after he left that office. In fact, in those comments, he claimed that Obama had sent him to Detroit during the pandemic to work with Mayor Mike Duggan. We actually covered that a few weeks ago, and this is actually one of the examples in the Wall Street Journal that I am worried about. Mm -hmm. Let's watch. If you think that maybe, just maybe he misspoke and meant to say that he went to Detroit following the economic crash and in order to deliver news about the you know, automotive bailout that happened under Obama, you would be mistaken because again, he talked about spending a lot of time with the current mayor of Detroit. And the current mayor, Mike Duggan, took office in January of 2014. Biden cared a lot about the auto bailouts. That's why we said, okay, well, let's look into it. 
I know we don't have to look into it. It's obviously it happens around 2009. Duggan takes office in 2014. They're like, oh yes, swine flu also in 2009. Ebola. No, none of these are the pandemic that Biden was referring to. Duggan was not in office for any of them. Did Biden meet with Duggan and spend good time with him? Yes. When in 2021, when Biden was president, not vice president. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. So I do think there are some examples that were shared in this Wall Street Journal piece that you know are cause for concern. And look, anyone who's honest, any Democratic voter who's honest, sees with their own two eyes that Biden, he's struggling a bit, right? Mm -hmm. I think it would be a lie to pretend like that's not the case. Yeah. So do I think that this was a hatchet job? Look, there. Look, I gave you an example where I felt like I wouldn't have even included it if I were a reporter, if I were the one penning this piece in the Wall Street Journal because someone speaking too low it is really not a sign that they're struggling with their mental capacity. But there are examples that are, you know, fair to point out. It's also important to note that Democrats had a reason to hesitate before criticizing Biden. Remember, the Wall Street Journal also spoke to Democrats, not just Republicans for this piece. The White House kept close tabs on some of the Wall Street Journal's interviews with Democratic lawmakers. After the offices of several Democrats shared with the White House, uh, either a recording of an interview or details about what was asked. Some of those same lawmakers spoke to the journal a second time and once again emphasized Biden's strengths. One of those individuals was a Democratic Congressman Gregory Meeks, uh, who talked to the journal for this piece. This is what he said of the White House. They just, you know, said that I should give you a call back. That's not good, that's yeah. not a good look. The Biden camp should not have done that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot here. I think this is a really interesting topic. In terms of like them having some criticisms that seem super justified and others that seem really marginal, I think you could look at that in one of two ways. Either it's, they don't think that the substantive one is enough, so they're just stretching to create a narrative. Or they're already reporting on the substantive ones. So I guess you're gonna comment about anything in that area. So maybe it's fair to include the soft spoken thing. Mm -hmm. Like they probably wouldn't do a whole article if it was just that, but they were told that, so you mentioned it. That could be fair, theoretically. Um, I, I think the answer, at least from my point of view, is fairly simple. They should replace Joe Biden at the DNC with someone younger who has a far higher chance of beating Donald Trump. And if they do that, awesome. And if they don't do that, then Biden should beat Trump, obviously. In terms of the speech, I think it's two things simultaneously. I actually spoke to a doctor, I interviewed him on TDR, and he did a linguistic analysis of Biden and of Trump comparing recent speeches from when they were younger. And the decay in speech, a lot of people, non experts like me, think of that as being one thing, sort of like a spectrum of issues or mm -hmm. characteristics of getting older. But there's actually two sets of them. There's sort of normal things that affect the vast majority of people as they get older, things like speaking slower, speaking lower, some pauses, little, little slips in memory, things like that. And then there are ones that are like diagnostically signs of neurological decay, mm -hmm. like really mixing up two things, having a like an extended difficulty in coming up with terms. And the way he coded it was that Joe Biden had a little bit of the neurological one and a lot of the old man one. Mm. And Donald Trump had a little bit of the old man one, not a lot. He still speaks quickly and loudly and all that, but much more of the neurological one. Neither of these can be perfectly mapped to your decision making ability or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But we go to these because that's what we have visual evidence of. I don't know what Biden's thinking, but I can see what he's saying and whether he's having trouble. So they, they both have their issues. I I think it's totally fair to say that Joe Biden has his issues. Like you, you watch him speak, and sometimes he's good, and sometimes he's forceful, and sometimes he seems really weak, and he'll like wander off and then come back to the mic, and you're like, why are you doing this? Like I think it's totally yeah. fair to point that out, and they should replace him, but probably won't. I think I think your analysis is on point, and and look, that video of him. You know, remember he was like walking off stage. I forget exactly what the reporter asked him after Trump was found guilty. The verdict was guilty on all 34 counts mm -hmm. of falsifying business documents. 
And he just like creepily turned back as he was slowly walking off the stage and did that weird grin. He did the grin. Yeah. I, I liked it a little bit. It oh, was, no, it was, no, John, no, 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 no. John. It, it was 90% creepy and 10%. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I know. I know. He shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have done that it. That was all. awful. But um. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's listen, fair. Listen, we've heard your opinion, which is fine and all that. But why don't we go to the real experts over at Morning Show? <laughs> the journal writes, quote, last year when Biden was negotiating with House Republicans to lift the debt ceiling, his demeanor and command of the details seemed to shift from one day to the next, according to then House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. By the way, they also qu quoted, quoted in this article. Mike Johnson, people around Mike Johnson, and admit that this was basically House Republicans whacking. Why didn't they just ask Marjorie Taylor Greene? Well, exactly. To Why did, um, yeah, they could and have Lauren just. Lauren yeah, it's, it, it's really so, shocking. What I find so shocking about this article is they go to Kevin McCarthy as their main source and other House Republicans, and they're using people around Johnson and Kevin McCarthy to do this, this Trump hit piece on Joe Biden. Guys, the piece is lengthy. So maybe they didn't actually read it, but there are plenty of positive quotes about Biden from Democrats. So if they had only interviewed Biden's political opponents, okay, I totally get it. The criticism coming from Morning Joe, totally just, but that's not the case. And Americans have eyes and ears and they can see what's really going on here. In response to the Wall Street Journal piece, Nancy Pelosi wrote the following. Many of us spent time with the Wall Street Journal to share on the record our firsthand experiences with the President of the United States, where we see his wisdom, experience, strength, and strategic thinking. Instead, the journal ignored testimony by Democrats, focused on attacks by Republicans, and printed a hit piece. It's just not true. Yeah, it's that, that's not too much. true. That's too much. Yeah. And both sides are playing politics here. Obviously, the Democrats are gonna say Biden is doing great, there's no problem. And Republicans are gonna be like, no, he's already dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the way it goes, that's politics. Mm -hmm. the, the worst thing the Wall Street Journal could have done was just lean heavily into one side while ignoring the other. But my overall take on the piece is I didn't learn anything from it at all. Sure. It was just a compilation of some of the missteps that Biden has made, complete with comments from politicians on both sides of the aisle. All of whom are biased for one reason or another. Exactly. Hey, thanks for watching the video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.